Lesson 112 is more on multiplication of radical expressions. We've got radical expressions here because we've got our radicals. And here we have a binomial, two terms, times a binomial, two more terms. So we need to use our FOIL method, F, O, I, and L. And our FOIL method, of, of course, stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And this is the order that we multiply things together in order to solve. Now the first things. We'll start with the first things first. 2 times 3. We can simplify in our next step as we go. 2 times 3. Then we're going to get addition because we have all addition all the way through. Our outer numbers. The numbers on the outsides of our parentheses. The outside and the outside. 2 times the square root of 8. Plus. Then we have our inner numbers, and our inner numbers on the insides of our parentheses is going to be 3 times the square root of 2, plus, and then finally, our last one is going to be our last numbers. And we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 8. Now we can go ahead and use this in order to solve. Let's put a box around this so this is clear, this is one piece. 2 times 3, that's 6, plus 2 times, well the square root of 8 that can be broken down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and we'll simplify this in our next step, plus 3 times the square root of 2, plus, and then we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 8, that's the square root of 16. We've got more to simplify. 6 stays by itself, 6 plus 2 times the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, times the square root of 2 plus 3 times the square root of 2, plus square root of 16, that must be 4. Alright, now, now is where we have to add our like terms. 6 plus 4, that's 10. Plus, and how many square roots of 2 do we have? Well, we can see we have 4 square roots of 2, we have 3 square roots of 2, that must give us a total of 7 square roots of 2. And we've got our answer, 10 plus 7 times the square root of 2. Let's go ahead and look at a few more. All right, we're going to multiply. This time we've got some subtraction involved. Let's take it one piece at a time with that FOIL method. So we're going to start off 4 times 2. That's 8. That's our first. Then we have our outer. This time we have minus. We have 4 times 2 times the square root of 5. Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to get 8 times the square root of 5. Then we have our inner numbers. That's going to give us plus 2 times the square root of 5. Then our last numbers. And we have minus 2 times the square root of square root of 5. Goes with the square root of 5. That's going to be the square root of 25 when we multiply them together. Now let's simplify each piece as we go. 8 minus how many square roots of 5 do we have? Well, we've got negative 8 square roots of 5. We've got positive 2 square roots of 5. Negative 8 plus 2 gives us negative 6 square roots of 5. Minus 2 times, well, the square root of 25 is 5. So we can now simplify. We're going to 8 minus 6 times the square root of 5 minus 10. Now to fi finalize this process, we have 8 minus 10. And 8 minus the 10 is going to give us negative 2. So we have negative 2 minus 6 times the square root of 5. And we're all done. We can't simplify that any further. So we'll put a box around it and move on to our next question. Make sure you show your work as you go through these. There's multiple steps, and showing those steps as you go can help ensure that you get the right answer in the end. Now here's our last problem. We want to multiply the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 3 times y squared. Now look very carefully at this one, and what you'll notice is that the x and the y are not within our radical symbols. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little brace here to show that the square root sign stops after the 2 and it stops after the 3. The textbook doesn't do that. You may do it if you like. It's really important that you look at these carefully to see where the square root sign ends because it affects our final answer. So if we have something squared, it means we're multiplying it by itself. So we're going to get the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 3 
times y, and then we're multiplying that by itself because it's squared. So we're going to get the square root of 2 times x plus the square root of 3 times y, and now we can find our final answer using that FOIL method. Well, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And x times x is x squared. That's our first piece. Let's use some colors here. First, then we have our outer numbers next. So our outer numbers, that's going to give us plus square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6. x times y is going to give us x times y. And we've got plus again. Now we're looking at our inner numbers. And when we look at our inner numbers, we're going to get the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 6 again. And we're going to get y times x. And I'm going to write that as x times y, so these look exactly the same. Plus, and our last numbers here when we multiply, well, we're going to get the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 9. And we have y times y, which is y squared. Now let's simplify. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, so we're going to get 2 times x squared plus, well, this is one that is interesting because we have the square root of 6 times xy plus the square root of 6 times xy. Let's look at what if we had a similar problem. Let's say we had 3 plus 3. If we had 3 plus 3, 3 plus 3 is very much like doing this problem because we're taking a number or a value and we're adding it to another value. This one we're taking a value and we're adding it to another value. The way we could rewrite this one instead of saying 3 plus 3 is 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 plus 3 is 6. And we're going to do that same thing here. We're going to take the value and we're going to multiply it by 2 because we've got two of them. So we're going to get 2 times the square root of x times x times y. Then our last piece is going to be plus square root of 9. That's 3 and we're going to get 3y squared, and we've got our final answer. We can go ahead and box this one, and move on to our next question. Lesson practice will be on page 471. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.